Once upon a time. Uh -huh. Yes, it sounds like a fairy tale. A little something for the children. But what if the fairy tale isn't a tale at all? What if the story were true? to believe it calls to us lurking beneath the ground we walk on a truth so secret so dangerous that history has to be rewritten and a fairy tale is born The sins of our fathers, waiting to be avenged over centuries. Son, all the way to the stars. All the way to the stars. Fly, Jack. Fly, Jack. Fly, Jack. Race into the house, Jack. Run as fast as you can. Sam? Your overnight faxes, sir. Thank you. Coffee or protein? Straight to the coffee, thanks. Uh, Dr. Newman is on his way up. Straight to the protein, thanks. Another physical. What is it with these insurance companies? Perhaps they just want to be sure. What I like about you, DeSan. No, sir. 
Me neither. Ah, wit. Truly your greatest asset. Your heart beats here, but your mind's not, Jack. Say, Doc, what does that cloud look like to you? See the eyes, the mouth? Jack, hello. I feel fine, Doc. When you say fine, you mean fine, but not so good. No, I mean good. Good how? Good like? I feel great, outrageously great, just like last month and the month before that. Okay. All your vitals are normal. No. So you see, I'm not dying. So stop treating me like I am. Sam, Dr. Newman's leaving. Willingly or by force? By force, dear Sam. All right, Jack. I'm going. You know, you promised me a game of golf. What? Three months ago? All right. It'll make you feel better. We'll play golf. Ever ask yourself why you work all the time? There are a lot of people who depend on me for their livelihoods. Now, I've got a board meeting in five minutes, so unless there's something else, Doc. You Robinsons just work yourselves into early graves. Doesn't it bother you that not one of you in over 10 generations has been able to get past 40? No, not really. And by the way, my father died flying an airplane. And your grandfather? Your great-grandfather, how did they go? Okay, granted. The men in my family have had a really bad run of luck. Oh, that's some run. Maybe an all-time record. All I'm saying is you should make some time. Take a vacation. Meet another nice girl like her. What was her name? Women are a complication that I can't afford right now. You can't? Jack, you were born with platinum spoons sticking out both your ends. You have more money than you could ever spend. Start living before. Before what, Doc? Desan, what do you think? Oh, in the old country, we believe one should suffer the tortures and injustices of life in order to fully appreciate the pain and anguish of encroaching death. You see? Something to look forward to. I'll be home late, Desan. I shall root myself to this very spot until your return. Hey, Walter. Good morning, Mr. Robinson. How many pounds? Down six. Looks good. Jack, here's a revised agenda. And here are all these messages. Here's all these messages right back at you. OK. Mr. Mannheim arrived from the airport. I told him you were imminent. But of course, he started the board meeting anyway. Jules, who's that in your office? Oh, just one of the millions dying to get a piece of you. I'll deal with it. Or, uh, I could get you a phone number. No, 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 that's all right. You take care of it. Like I always do? <laughs> what I do without you? <laughs> oh, everybody's meeting in the fifth floor conference room for lunch today. What for? They're gathering in memory of your father. It's 20 years ago today. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack. No. No, no, no you're right. I should go, yeah. But don't forget. You have a dinner with Mrs. Gilgan tonight. Children's Coalition. I can't reschedule it again. All right, I'll go. I know it's for a really, really, really good cause. Thanks, Jules. And we watch it. Ah, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Jack. Morning. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry I'm late. It seems our insurance underwriters can't get enough of my vital statistics. No real medical problems, I hope. I'm happy to inform you all that I'm in perfect health. So relieved. Mm. You didn't miss much. We were just completing the European Division projections for the next fiscal year, which you have in your report. What's this hiccup at the Castle Project? I've got a fax that says we've shut down. A momentary work stoppage. Nothing more. i brief you on the details later. Fine. Next item, North America. Peters' division is sucking down cash faster than free beer at a barbecue. Not exactly hard fundamentals, but a good visual. <laughs> Check. Vitas's energy alternatives have had over two decades with no positive results. I strongly recommend... Jack? Sorry, I've been waiting an hour to speak with you. 
Mr. Malinis, you have to wait a little longer. Outside, please. Boop, 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 boop. Ziggy, it's all right. Vetus, we were just talking about your project. Why don't you come in and have a seat? Jackie, you know what they're doing. How can you put us on the block when we're on the verge of a major breakthrough? We know what you sold us, Vitas. Biomass, non-polluting fuel from pickled farm crops. Enhanced putrefaction. Millions upon millions of dollars have been pumped into this research. So where's the endless source of energy promised for years? Nowhere. It's not here. Simple. Jack, please, listen to me. Just listen. You can stop this, Jack. Vitas, please, have a seat. This is not easy for any of us, Vidas. But every division that is not profitable must be a candidate for liquidation. Profits, that's all you want. Huh? Now, now, now. I need more. I want more, more. You gouge it. You use it. Vidas, this isn't the way. There it is, Jack. You're not going to believe this. The results of all that effort. A hybrid. Biogenetically engineered desert pea that can grow to full maturity with less than two inches of rainfall per year, you see. We can end famine and hunger in the deserts. Yes. Generations of children will no longer go hungry. Don't you see? Don't you see it? You can save the world. Seeds, Vetus. I just see seeds. Your father invested in us because of you, Jackie. <laughs> I understand, Peter, I do. But this... This is a business. This company has over 30,000 employees worldwide. Starving nations aren't going to pay their salaries. Are they? No, no, I'm sorry, Jack. Look at you all sitting there with no idea. You have the resources to make a difference. You just don't care about anyone but yourself. Perhaps this is a good time to take a break. Would you excuse us, Jules? I'd like a moment with Jack alone. Thank you so much. Poor Vetus. That was not easy. You did precisely what you had to do, Jack. Did I? Without question. So you want to tell me about this work stoppage at the castle? Trust me, I am now on it. I call you in the morning from England. But that is not what is really bothering you, is it? You know what today is? <sighs> of course I do. Uh, Jack, your father. You always had a sixth sense about things. Even his own death. It was like he knew. He made me promise that I would help you run this big monster company. And I only hope I've been of some assistance. Come on, Ziggy. You've been everything to me. But Jack, today you made a tough decision for the good of the company. If your father was here, I would be so happy to inform him that you're doing a super Cutting the legs out from underneath a brilliant scientist, that gets me points. Tough decisions make the man. Do they?
Sorry, that's why. Your guest, Ms. Gilgan. Jonathan William Duncan Robinson. Sorry. Undine. Undine. Yes, from the charity. Miss Gilgan, please. Well, no. No? Weren't you in my office today? Yes, I was. I've been waiting a very long time to meet you. You have? Well, I, I guess you found me. Uh, Andine, what is that, French? Similar, I'm told. So, Andine, what, what, what can I do for you? Yes, um, I want to interview you, Jack Robinson, about yourself and your company, Robinson International. A journalist. Well, I have to warn you, I'm the world's most boring interview. <laughs> Seriously, though, uh, Siegfried Mannheim, that's who you want to speak to. He's uh, the head of the overseas division. He's been with the company for years. And if you'd like, I can arrange it. Oh, but I want to hear it from you. The last Jack. The last Jack? You have no heir, Jack Robinson, true? Not yet. You are turning 40 years of age, are you not? No, I'm not. I think I've got a few years left. What's the point Excuse of Excuse me, Mr. Robinson. Will you be starting with champagne this evening? Yes, uh, Cristal 90. 90? Very good, sir. No, no, wait. You don't like champagne? I've... I've never tasted it. No, we'll, we'll have the champagne. Never had champagne. <laughs> Where are you from? Do you know the story of Jack and the Beanstalk? What? The fairy tale? Yeah, sure. But what's that got to do with... You? Is your life not like a fairy tale? I don't know. <laughs> I believe you do. <laughs> right, yeah. You mean like uh, Jack the corporate giant killer climbing the corporate beanstalk? Yes. And then he killed the giant and stole his treasures. And lives happily ever after. Only I haven't killed any giants lately or found any treasure. But you are living happily ever after, are you not? <laughs> you know, you're very intense. You're beautiful, but intense. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm lost. Again. <laughs> Grave, where you're building the hotel, the castle. Grave? They uncovered it, stopping all the work, yes? What are you talking about? Please tell me you're not some insurance investigator or something. You know very well what is in that ground. These crimes you've kept buried all these years. The truth about where your family fortunes come from, Jack Robertson. Look, I think this is getting a little too intense. I think this interview's over. Sorry to disturb you, Mr. Robinson. Another Miss Gilligan is here. Mr. Robinson? Mary Lou Gilligan, Children's Coalition. I am so sorry I am late. Funniest thing, I received something of a strange call that you had canceled. So when I called to reschedule in your lovely secretary, what is her name? Jules. She is a keeper. Well, ooh, champagne. Hello? Ziggy, it's Jack. Jack? It's seven o'clock in the morning. Ziggy, I need to know what's going on over there. I heard something about a grave today. A grave? Yeah. This unusually attractive woman crashed my dinner tonight. Started asking me questions about what we dug up at the castle. Not a good idea, Jack. Sharing the family business with strange women. I didn't have to share anything. I just listened. What exactly is going on over there, Ziggy? Well, we have had some little trouble. A freak accident. Freak accident? What do you mean? Just that. A 
freak accident. You know, I was hoping to handle this little hiccup without alarming you. Well, I am alarmed. What, am I the first Robinson to ever care about our company's operations? Of course not. And I should hope not the last. Ziggy? 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 Krivlak, actually. Dreadful spot in Albania. All right, all right. You're killing me. Sandwich? Something to drink? Oh, um, I saved an article for you in Good Housekeeping. Zen and the Art of Plumbing. Oh? The truth is seldom found in the opinions of others. One should go to the source of the clogged drain to solve the problem. Are you saying I have a clog in my drain? Good night, sir. Hussain. Sir. Call the hangar. Tell him to fuel up the jet. Of course. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Oh, yes. Yes, you've heard that before, haven't you? Not a pleasant thought, is it? Being ground up alive. this jack the authorities have just declared us an official crime scene crime scene ziggy i'm losing you sir we better get you out of here jack can you hear me jack are you all right i'll meet you in the village a tavern stoker's stoker's tavern keep your name to yourself jack as you may have noticed the natives are somewhat restless I know that woman. Mr. Robinson! Paper man, are we? Yes, that's right. I tell you, it's all right, Ness, this casino business. Ruin as it will. It's all right, my lover. From your mate over there. Police have declared Camelot Castle a crime scene of angry protesters at Ryan's Ground. The mysterious freak accident has left one construction worker dead and another critically injured. 
Hundreds of villagers are in uproar over development work. Police are trying to control the crowds, but demonstrators refuse to leave the site. Business giant Robertson International is transforming the castle. There's going to be travel strike on the way. And there she is. I knew you would come. How? I came here by private jet. You would have had to leave hours before I even knew I was coming. How could you know that? I have more questions. Really? I have a few questions for you, if you don't mind. This is from you, isn't it? Thief and the murderer. It's pretty strong, don't you think? You are afraid? Afraid? I'm not afraid. You should be. Of what? It's in that grave. Afraid of what has happened to all the men in your bloodline. Go on. Your father died when you were 14. He was 42. Your grandfather died when he was 40. Your great-grandfather died... Didn't make 40. I know. And the one before that, and the one before that, and so on and so on. I know. Let's see. Robinson curse. It's a local superstition around here, and I'd rather not talk about it. You must. Why? Why is it that people seem to constantly want to remind me of my tragic family lineage? You are afraid that if you two have an heir, you will die? If I'm afraid of anything, it's that if I do have a son, he won't have a father to raise him. Do you have any idea what that's like? Do you? I didn't think so. So don't tell me what I must do. I wouldn't wish my life on any child. Ever. Not my son. You think you're the only one to have suffered? Somebody has suffered. You have the abundance of your riches to ease your pain. Do you think that money can replace the people that I love? No, I do not. Nothing can replace the family I have lost. About what, those bones? I swear to you, I don't know what they dug up in that hole. How can you not know? How can you not know the source of your family's wealth? Everything that I have is built on the blood and sweat of my ancestors. That is a lie, Jack. As far as I know, I'm telling you the truth. If, if you know something that I don't, I wish you'd just tell me. People are already dying because of you. Who? What people? You do not know. Do you know this woman? Wilhelmina. It was a long time ago, but she was a great aunt or something. Countess von Stroheim, the eldest of your clan. Can't be the same person. These photos are 60, 70 years apart. It's impossible. Will you help me find her? I'd like to, but she passed away when I was just a kid. She was my last hope. Last hope for what? Tell me what you're looking for. The sacred treasures. The source of all your wealth stolen by your thieving, murdering ancestor. Well, or never. Look, lads. Look what a cat's dragged in. Mr. Jack Megabucks himself. Come to spread the Robinson curse on our village, have ya? Have ya? Oh, 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 oh sorry, mate. Moron. Come on. Sorry. Come on. Carry on, boys. Let me get you to it. Come on. Let me get you in that. Andy! Sorry about that, Mr. Robinson. It's all right.
Welcome home, Mr. Thomas. Jackie, I'm sorry I couldn't make it to the village. Problems, but everything's under control now. Under control? What are you talking about? That was a riot out there. Look at me. I look like I was in a bar fight. I almost was in a bar fight. Just look at you. Maybe you should sleep in the stables. You <laughs> think? Seriously, Ziggy. I thought you said these people wanted this development. They do. That it'd bring jobs to the village. That's right. The people will be better off. Than what? Than they are now. Well, then why are they storming the castle? Carrying signs, trashing the Robinson name. Just what the heck did we dig up? Look, Jack, you've been through a lot tonight. Let's get you a nice hot bath, some sleep, and we speak in the morning. No, I want to talk about it now. I've already been accused of murder tonight. Murder? This has been gone for over 20 years. You made your father's life miserable before she died. I know what I saw, Ziggy. Those two photos of her were at least 60 years apart. She looked exactly the same in both of them. That's impossible, Jack. Has it occurred to you that your mysterious woman doctored up the photos? Maybe. Ziggy, is there some deep, dark secret in our family that no one's ever talked about? Because according to her, the Robinson stole some sacred treasures. Well, we are known to be very shrewd businessmen, Jack, but I'm sure we've never stooped to stealing. Did she happen to mention what kind of treasures? No, not really. But... Oh, Jack. I should draw an enormous bullseye on you with big dollar signs and let women line up and pick you clean. She wants money, Jack. If she shows up again, call security. Make it this. Has that been doctored too? Thief and murderer. Sounds like a stalker. Come on, Ziggy. Something's going on. You've always been honest with me. Just tell me the truth. All of it. I didn't want you embroiled in all this. But we're facing a wrongful death lawsuit on the two workers who died. It's two now. It was a strange lightning storm. It happened right down there, at the bottom of the South Green. They were digging up the foundation, and they found bones. And it is a gravesite. Listen, listen, Jack. Huge bones. And apparently, they don't belong to any dinosaur. And what are they? We don't know. Perhaps you just must see for yourself. Now, the first six vertebrae were pulverized. There. See it? Massive compound fractures to the posterior cranium. Death was probably caused by deep trauma impact, severing the neck and crushing the spinal cord there. You're sure it's not some kind of a, a dinosaur? Maybe you just haven't found the tail. Mr. Robinson, everyone on this team is highly qualified. What we've discovered here is something that defies everything we thought we knew about the evolution of humankind for the last 100,000 years. Yeah, please don't tell me that you think that this is a giant. I know it sounds unbelievable, 
but yes. Ziggy, we have a giant skeleton in our closet. Now, death occurred between three and four hundred years ago. It was separated at the torso and each joint by a sharp object. This creature was murdered. Murdered. Can we all just step back and take a deep breath for a moment? Now, this is either the greatest scientific discovery of the ages or an incredibly elaborate hoax. And until we know the truth, this cannot get out. There's no hiding any longer. The truth is uncovered. Come home, my boy. I'm waiting. Faster, Jackie! Jackie! Run, son! Run! She would speak with you. She's dead! She's not dead! She's not dead! Jack Robinson. I'm quite aware of who you are. My God, Wilhelmina. I've waited for you for so long, for so many years. But Ziggy said you were expired. Perhaps to protect you. Why? You're alive. <laughs> That's very observant. Come closer so I can take a proper look at you. Come and give me a hug. I won't bite. Mm -hmm. Oh, call that a hug? <laughs> it's just... You look the same. 
Please do remember, I hoped you would. You were six years old the last time your father brought you here. I knew even then you had that special sparkle in your eye, and you still do. Do I? Mm. Yes. Jack, there are forces at play here that I do not fully understand. Forces at play? I know you're frightened. Please, Wilhelmina, with all due respect, I was hoping that I had finally found someone who might be able to make sense of all this. Good, that's why I sent for you. Because unlike your father and your forefathers, you're searching for the truth. Well, yes, of course I am, but these last few days, but there's been a lot of strange things happening. It's all very confusing. You know, I understand. Come, come and sit here. Please, please. Let me try to explain. History is made up of many different stories. Stories of heroes, great leaders, great discoveries, but sometimes the story seems all too impossible to believe. So history is rewritten, and a fairy tale is born. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I think so. To believe in the inconceivable is very difficult for most of us. Trying to convince someone else to believe almost seems impossible. Long ago, a curse, a terrible curse, was laid upon our family. The crimes of our ancestors taking their toll over generations, 400 years. A curse that only you can end. Only the right Jack can end it. The right Jack. Forces at play. The Robinson curse. You think you're too old to believe in the impossible. All you have to do is open your mind and listen very closely, for this is your story, Jack. Fifteen generations ago. Three hundred and ninety years. In the springtime of the year. 1611. That's when it all started. Once upon a time, it was a dead season. Rain would pour, but still the crops withered. Come on, milky girl! Oh, you're pulling like a piglet now! Go! Go! Go. Mm. Jack's mother did her best to scratch out a living on her husband's meager lands. was a wild one, adventuresome, and a tad careless. Go on, Tiny. Middle. Sure. Oh, bad luck, Tiny. I'm sorry. You're not trying to be clever, are you, Jackie? What the? Well, how did that get there? Boy, come here! Uh, come here! Uh, oh dear! Poor Jackie's on his bum again! Just like his drunk old dad! He was a knight! And braver than any of you toad-faced she-rumps! 
Jack was a bit of a shyster. She rum! You mustn't say such things about your mum, Jackie! In spite of his bad luck, he was determined to make good for his mother. Unfortunately, in Jack's case, he couldn't quite do anything Ow. right. Ow. Ow. Uh, just like your father. <laughs> Not much good for anything, are you? All Jack wanted was to make his mother proud of him. Cheese and a sixpence. Where'd you get this, lad? I worked for it, Mother. I did! Oh, I should doubt that, but... <laughs> We hope for you yet, Jackie. <laughs> Life went from bad to worse when Milky White gave no milk. We'll be starving dead before next rain, Jackie. The old girl's as dry as dust. And I'm hard to butcher her. I'll be taking her to market tomorrow morning. Get a good price for her. Let me take her, Mother. And what's more, I'll not fetch a penny less than 15 sovereigns for her. I promise. Don't be surprised if I come back with a fortune. We'll do the place up. Make it a fine inn. You'll be the queen of the village. You just run off like your father. I wouldn't, Mother. I'd not do that. Take her. Sell her right. She's all we've got left. I will, Mother. You'll not be sorry. Jack vowed to prove his worth, not only to his mother, but also to himself. Come on, Milky. Good girl. Come on, girl. Come on, Milky. Hello, Jackie. We've come to get even. Look, look, uh, we're all adults here, so I'm sure we can uh, settle this with a friendly wager. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> friendly wager. <laughs> uh, now, <laughs> give us what you've got. <coughs> all right, all right. I can give you a whole half sovereign. How about we just take your bag of bones over here? Oh, no, no. I've got a better idea. How's about we bash old bag of bones brains in, eh? <laughs> no! Good day. And how are you this fine afternoon? Hey, old man. Why don't you just... Why don't you just run home before I tell your mums what you done to your neighbour's dog yesterday? Don't know what you mean. Don't know what you're talking about. Come on, let's go. How did he know what we done to that dog? Let's get out of here. Thank you, kind sir. A pleasure. I wonder what sort of a bargain a smart lad like you might make when you get milk here to market. She's a very valuable cow. I'm sure she'll fetch quite the price. Is that so? Now, Jack, uh, that be your name? Jack, can you tell me how many beans make five? You're having me on. No, 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 not at all. All right. Two in my left hand. Two in my right hand and one in my mouth. Are you willing to stake your life on it? Yeah. Precisely. Clever boy. Anything you wanted. 
be a great knight, a rich man with hundreds of servants, a ruler feared by all, anything you wished. I just want to take care of my mother, make her proud. Then you are of clear intention and pure of heart. After this day, your mother will worship the ground you walk on. That's a fair exchange for a cow that no longer gives milk. But they're beans. Oh, don't be ridiculous. They're more than that. See for yourself. You and your mother will never go hungry again. Believe in the possibility of the impossible. And so Jack, wanting to be a hero to his mother, made the deal that would change his life forever. No money. You take my only cow to market and all you bring back are a few dried up, miserable... Well, hold on. They're magic. We'll never go hungry again. That's what the man said. Jack, I trusted you. And you bring me beans! We'll be having no supper tonight. Nor ever likely to from this day on. So, as poor Jack fought himself to sleep, wishing he could find the bent little man who cheated him of his last chance to make his mother proud, something wondrous was happening. Jack and his mother never seen such an extraordinary thing. Surely something wonderful awaited him at the top. Determined to discover his destiny awaiting in the sky, Jack! Jack climbed the beanstalk 
Be careful, my boy. His mother urging him on. Be brave, Jack. And Jack climbed the beanstalk straight up to the sky. The story, Aunt Willie. Jack and the Beanstalk. It's a fairy tale. It's not a fairy tale. It really happened. You sound just like your father. Do I? Yes. And you're being awfully rude, and you're missing the point. Am I? Have the nightmares started yet? Your father had them as well, you know. All the Jack Robinsons have them, eventually. How long, my dear? They started a couple of years ago. Now it's almost every night. Oh, Jack, your time is running out. What do you mean? You saw the bones. I saw something. Ah, the giants are coming after you. Opening that grave has unleashed great forces. Oh, my dear. Can you not feel them? Feel them? <laughs> I don't know what I feel. Then listen to me. Days. Until at last he found himself at the top of the beanstalk, exhausted, barely able to breathe. found paradise. Everywhere abundance, harmony. Unlike the barren and violent world that Jack knew. Jack had never seen such an extraordinary castle in his life. Surely this grand manor would hold the riches that dreams are made of. Rubbish on my head. Oi! What are you up to down there, you scallywag? I'm on a quest for my mother and I, I have a terrible hunger. Well, you'll be dinner if you don't get away from here sharpish. What? Oh, 
just come in and be quick. Unaware of the danger awaiting him, Jack entered the castle of Thunderdale. Here. If you want to eat, you work. Grab this arm. Don't let him get a whiff of you. He hates English men. Him? Thunderdells, are you my boy? Thunderdell. For days, Jack heard the name over and over. The sound of it struck fear into the faces of the helpers, forced to cook huge portions of food. Thunderdell must be having a big party. Either that or he's bloody starving. <laughs> The day arrived. Enough food to feed a hundred people had been prepared. Come on, come on! That's right, get them nice and walk down there nicely. mood with you blowing your rancid breath at me, huh? No! All right, all right. <laughs> you know, I love you, sweetie, but if you could uh, just play right away, we wouldn't have to go through this every time. Shh. Relax. I'll take care of you, dearie. Play, 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 play. No, all right, all right. You're constipating me here with all that yelling. And plays the enchanted harp indeed. Strange and beautiful songs with a power that affected the goose in a very unusual way.
Jack's greed burned brighter with each golden egg he saw. Three, five, four, five. Jack clutched the golden egg, its power already at work on him. With a treasure like this, his mother would not have to live in squalor. Fearless Jack was eager for more. Take you in, give you food, tell you to stay out of sight, and what do you do? Go waltzing out on that table as if you owned the place. If he had seen you, he would have killed a lot of us just for letting you in. Give me that egg. You'll miss it in the count. I'll put them all away. The one in your pocket. Where's your brain? My, it could be a great night. My, my mother, a queen. We'll never have to go hungry again. There's plenty here for you too. Underdale would kill you just for having them thoughts. Oh, oh, are we going out? I've never been out. <laughs> One can touch them oh, treasures and live to tell the tale. No evil, nasty, selfish child deserves these wondrous things more than us. Sometimes Jack could be very persuasive. He said he came here on some beanstalk. to fend for herself, Jack climbed back down the beanstalk. His mother had waited for what seemed like years, living off the beans from the stalk. Thank you. 
Not now, mother! <laughs> We've got company! We have to chop it down. He's going to kill us. Oh, Jack! I thought you forgot me, Jack! There's an enormous giant climbing down that beanstalk who wants to kill us for this gold. Give me that axe. Thank you, Tiny. <laughs> and so, Jack the Giant Killer became the most famous burglar in all history. Well done, brother. Well done, well done. Jack? You know, I am listening. I really am trying to accept all this, but... Yes? You're asking me to believe a fairy tale. Listen to me. Jack Robinson was a thief. He took what did not belong to him, and he was a murderer. Our family is cursed. All the wealth, all the power, everything we have springs from the greed of your ancestor. So I'm meant to believe everything you've just told me. I'm afraid it may be far worse. The first Jack, it was his story I told you. Was he telling the whole truth? Hmm. I'm afraid not. There must be more. Don't you understand? I can't be who I am and believe any of this. Believe it or not. You're the only one who can find out the truth and end the curse for all time. Otherwise, the truth will kill you. What am I supposed to do? I want you to take this. It was given to me a long time ago. What is it? Ah. It's your destiny. My destiny? 
When you believe, then you'll know what to do. And don't mull about, dear boy. I'm afraid you haven't much time. you could tell me. How do I explain your existence to my board? To the world? There's no such thing as giants. Now, do you believe your own eyes? Jack Robinson. Perfect timing. The mysterious Undine. You're right. They were bones. Big, scary, giant bones. He was my friend. He's your friend. <laughs> Undine, these bones are almost 400 years old. In your time. In my time? <laughs> Great answer. You're not from here, are you? From up there? It's in Andy. Hey, uh, I want to help you. I know. I know you do. You do? She gave me something. She? The Countess? She's alive. She said this was the key to ending this curse. No. No, that was stolen. Like everything else your family took from my people. This? This is the thing that my ancestors stole from you? No. No, the golden harp and, and Gallagher, the goose, the creature that made this. Did she tell you where they are? Hey, what's going on down there? This is 27. Call Mr. Mannheim. Jack. Here, request some backup. Hey, you stay right there. Do you understand? I've been sent to hunt you down to find the treasures. If I cannot find them, I must take you back with me. Take me back? How? Stay away. She's got some kind of explosive. Where is the police? Can we get the arm police from our front? Mr. Robinson is in immediate danger. We all could be. Quickly, quickly. Take it easy, miss. You just take it easy. Wait, wait. Listen, Andy, I'll go with you. Wherever it is you need to take me, I'll go. All right, madam. Now step out and into the open. Put whatever those things are down onto the ground and slowly lift your hands above your head. Take it easy. Nobody has to get hurt here. What are they waiting for? Stop it. Shoot. Take get down, Mr. Robinson. Keep back. Andy. Don't move. No, no.
Okay, Mr. Evans. Yeah. Okay. Take your time. Check up, be all right, Jack. Where is she, Ziggy? We need to find her. She's gone, Jack. After the explosion, not a piece of her left. Nothing. Don't talk now. Get Mr. Robinson to the hospital. Isolate him. No visitors. I get there as soon as I can, Jack. Close it down. Yes, sir. No press, no civilians. Pay attention, people. I'm not snapping off orders for my health. If anyone finds out, there will be repercussions. How you doing, Mr. Robinson? Fine. You just relax. Let's take care of you, okay? Okay, we've got minor abrasions, some bruising, and for safety's sake, we should check him for concussion. Mr. Robinson?
enough. Do you know the story of Jack and the Beanstalk? It's your destiny. You are the 15th descendant of the first Jack Robinson, are you not? Your father. You always had a sixth sense. A curse that only you can end. Even his own death. Only the right Jack can end.
It sounds crazy and unbelievable, but I just... Thank you. Thanks. I just climbed the beanstalk for two days. It was right there. Now it's not. It's... You saw it, right? Undine, I thought you were gone, but you're here. Yes, this is my world, Jack, and you're impossibly here. Oh, the bean, magic beans. I put the bean in the ground and it grew. It shot right up to the sky, just like in the story. In your necklace. Yes, I will have that now. Jeez, I thought you were a goner after that explody thing. <laughs> well. Here I am. So, who are your friends? Hi, I'm Jack Robinson. Mm -hmm. oh! I think I have a walking concussion. Oh, Jack, is there anything I can get you for your pain? No, really, I'm fine. Aspirin? No, thanks, I'm fine. Really? Well, actually, Jack, I will hit him again. Be quiet, Jack. Well, at least tell me where it is that you're taking me. Going to Mag Slack. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Our world was not always like this. This, the most beautiful valley. Flowers everywhere. And now it's only suffering that grows, day after day. How long's it been this way? In your time. Since your ancestor took Galligan the Harp, 390 years since Thunderdell died. Wait a minute, you said he was a friend of yours. How's that possible? You're not 400 years old. No. I'm older. In your time. <laughs> you do not believe me? Time passes differently in our world. 
for every year that passes in yours. Just one single day passes in ours. Wait a minute, you're telling me that my ancestor, Jack, who climbed the beanstalk 390 years ago in my time, was here 390 days ago in yours? Yes. So, if you're, what? 30 years old. In my time, you were born... 10,950 years ago. In your time. I must say, you're very well preserved. <laughs> it's a joke. I want to know where you're going. We're taking you to Max Lech to stand trial. In trial? For what? The crimes of your family against our people. Sleep now, Jack. You'll need your rest. they want, not ours. There is the source of our problems. Only his death will relieve our suffering. No one will touch him while he is in my charge. We take him to the council. They decide his fate, not you. You trust those ancients. They've grown weak. We are starving. Our families are dying. Justice is here. And now, the thief dies. We are all family. You leave us no choice. It's yeah! Do not do this! <laughs> Cut me loose, Rachel! Cut me loose! My people. He's my kin, the last of my cousins. Our land is dying, and people are reduced to killing each other, thanks to you. Are you accusing me of all this? What did I do? What is my crime meant to be? I came all the way here, wherever here is, because I wanted to help you. Tell you, Jack, why did you not stay where you were? Here. Isn't that what you wanted? You climbed the beanstalk. You've made your own choice. <laughs> Give me a bandage.
This would be Max Slack. He's left to this. to be innocent until proven guilty. You people have already judged me. That never happens in your world. Slick will now convene. Gargan. Xenos. Nimna. Despi. Odin. Mahakala. Zor. The wisest and most ancient Magog, arbiter of justice. This being the 391st day of our suffering, this great court convenes in judgment on the human known as Jack Robinson. As the last of your bloodline, you are formally charged with the wrongful death of Thunderdale. Wait. Wait, may I say something? Patience. You will be afforded your opportunity to speak. You also stand accused of the theft of our treasures, the goose of prosperity, the harp of harmony. The goose and the harp were created many hundreds of years ago. They are vessels containing the guiding energies of our world. Without these forces, our land is hopeless. No crops will grow. We will never see spring again. Ondine, as you have just returned from a world where no others are allowed to enter, will you tell this court what were your findings there? the bones of Thunderdell. I have seen his remains. 
Now, death occurred between three and 400 years ago. It was separated at the torso and each joint by a sharp object. This creature was murdered. His body was buried on the lands of this man's ancestors. Jack Robinson. Magog has addressed you. Step forward, be counted. You are entitled to a plea. How can I possibly be held responsible? I never met this Thunderdale person. My plea has to be not guilty. <laughs> Not the Jack Robinson you're looking for. So he pleads innocence. Up until a few days ago, I didn't even know this world existed. The crimes that you accuse me of happened almost 400 years ago. Fortunately for us, it is only 391 days. If it was 391 years, our world would have been nothing but a world of dust. All living things long gone. What does this have to do with me? Surely in your world, you benefit from the wrongdoings of your fathers. Then you inherit the obligation to right the wrong. If you do not, then who shall? Let us hear from someone who truly witnessed these crimes. Undine, after you lost your parents, Thunderdale took you in as his own daughter. Will you please tell us in your own words how these events came to pass? He was like a father to me. In all the world that was no more generous or kinder soul than Thunderdale. Thunderdale? Oh. <laughs> oh. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Andine. Oh, yes, please. There you go. Thank you. Bran! Undine! I grew up playing with Thunderdale's son, Bran, my best friend. Lovely boy. <laughs> All our lives were simple and good until the day I met Jack Robinson. Hello? Hello in the castle? Am I in heaven? Must be an angel. <laughs> no. Oh, Jack's my name. I just came up through the clouds on that giant beanstalk. And I did. Beanstalk? Yes. And I have a terrible hunger. Well, come in then, Jack from the clouds. He said he was on a quest for his mother to make her proud of him. He told me the horrors of his land. How they struggled to survive, that his mother was relying on. Thank you. He asked if the castle was mine. You must be the princess of this castle. <laughs> no. 
What was that? Come out from under there. It's only Thunderdown. Who? Thunderdown. Hello, little man. <laughs> uh. Hello. Sir. Undine. You look very happy today. Thunderdell, this is Jack. He's staying for dinner. <laughs> happy Undine. <laughs> Thunderdale took an immediate liking to Jack. He opened his heart, his home, his family to him. With me. How do you find the energy? It's almost morning. Quiet, everyone. It's time. Galaga, my hmm. precious one. Ready? Oh, you are such a charmer. Good Lord. A talking goose. Shh, that's not all she does. Yes, I'm ready. I've been brewing all night. Jack. There's someone I'd like you to meet. <laughs> Good morning, beautiful. Good morning, my keeper. Will you play in the new day? It is why I am. But for you, it is always an extra pleasure. Uh, excuse me. I hate to break this up, but I'm bursting over here. You know how it always helps if you if you play. Ah, oh, thank you. Gold. <laughs> yes. I punish myself every day for what I did next. I let him come with me to where Thunderdale kept the treasures. My mother gave this to me before she died. 
I am forever as close to you as this necklace. <laughs> Ondine, you're as sweet as Christmas pudding. <laughs> <laughs> These past few days have been the happiest days of my life. Then why do you want to leave? It's my mother. Life has been so hard for so long. I'm so sorry. But if I could just borrow the goose, just for doubt, and no one would notice, and I could make my mother so proud. Jack, Gallagher and the harp could never leave our world. Without the harp's music, Gallagher can lay no golden eggs. I don't understand. The goose and the harp are one. Like us. They should never be apart. It's just a, a foolish thought, my love. Jack, I wanted I'll trust you. Promise me you'll never betray that trust. Of course, my angel. Never. But he could not keep his promise. Not even for one night. Blinded by his selfish desire. Even as I left him there, I think I knew. But I could not bring myself to believe that all he had said, all he had promised, was a lie. Thunderdell, that Jack had betrayed us. It was the most difficult thing I've ever done. Come back, Jack! Please! Let him go, father. Let him go. Please. 
with no goose and heart. We have no world. We need no more. Oh, we'll die. Get him, Brad. Pull him up. Let go, son. No, father. Bran, you are good of heart. He betrayed Thunderdale. He betrayed me. He betrayed our world. Centuries of wealth. All your golden successes. Built on an evil and immoral act of theft and murder which destroyed an entire world. I was hoping that by coming here, I could end all that. These treasures belong in our world. While they're in yours, part of their power will be focused on killing the bloodline that stole them. Because then, and only then, will their power return to our world. So if I'm in the last Robinson and I die... Then the balance between our worlds will be restored. The powers possessed by the goose and the harp will return to our world. And yours, they will become uh, an ordinary goose, a simple hop, nothing more. Mako, surely we've heard enough. The time has come for judgment to be passed, has it not? Are all the members of the council satisfied? Yes. yes. Then let the council speak. For the starvation of our people, guilty. For the death of a generous and kind-hearted friend, guilty. For our proud beasts, who will never walk our land again. Destroying the balance between prosperity For and children, harmony. For our children, who will never see another the spring. and murder, guilty. 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 By the laws of our land. Guilty. The council is unanimous. There is no alternative but to sentence you to death. I came here looking for something, an answer. I'm ashamed to say that we've been telling the story wrong for many years. My ancestor lied to everyone in my world, too. But the price that your world has paid is truly horrible. Please, let me try to right this wrong. find the goose and the harp and bring them back. You do not even know where the treasures reside. 
You said so yourself! But it's worth my life to try. Sorry, Jack Robinson. We have been patient. I have no choice but to let the sentence stand and thereby shepherd your curse to an end. Let the blood of this man be shed to save a world. Seeds. Nothing has grown in this place for over a year. You of all people should know that. Bran, why do I feel so utterly miserable? See, because he's getting exactly what he deserves, or maybe because you've fallen in love with him. No, look what happened the last time I fell in love with the Jack. It's all right, Undine. Did you ever think that maybe you just fell in love with the wrong Jack? right. You do have a good heart. Thank you. 
Jack, I wanted to say how sorry I am for all that has happened. You saved your world. You accomplished what you set out to do. Did I? Eat something. I'm not really hungry. Besides, it's wasted on me. You should take it and feed your families. You are meant to have a last meal. I don't really want to last anything. I do not know what to say. I am responsible for your being here. Jack, I did not know it would be like this. Camel for Lord. I would never let him out of my sight. I know if we work together, we can find them. You know? Is it not worth a man's life to try? Undine, there are few in this land that I cherish more than you. But you have tried to find our treasures, and you could not. So what has changed? These are not his crimes to be punished for. He is innocent. Surely you can see that. Dean, even I am not innocent. I interfered. I was the one who used the ancient wisdom to create the very beings that caused all this. I sent for a special individual to inspire them in the way that we live, so they would learn from us and take those lessons back to their own world. But my actions were returned in the form. No, Hondi, no. I cannot let you go. Time will heal your heart. How can you know my heart?
shaking, Ragnar. In our land, no one has ever been sentenced to death before. Great. Hey, Robinson. You have been sentenced to die. May your death be merciful and quick. Right now, proceed. Stop them. Ragnar, you will not die. Not today. Duck. <laughs> what do I do? Make it look good. Hold me! <laughs> You don't think they'll come after us? Oh, yes, I do. Really? Really? How much time do we have? I reach in here. If you count his time for finding a search party, about 30 seconds. 30 seconds? 30 seconds? 30 seconds up there. 30 seconds down here is... Three hours, two seconds. How do you do that? Never mind. Come on. The castle's this way. Jack, there is something else you should know. This is it. The beanstalk. What's left of it. It's been cut. Someone felled it on purpose. Who would have done that? How did it rot so fast? Well, I've been trying to tell you. Come on. We're nearly there. Wait, Jack. I'm sorry. I tried to warn you. How long are we gone? Barely a week in our time. Seven years. Come on. Ziggy. It's very important. 
I'm sorry, who? Siegfried Mannheim. Still works here. He's not available at this hour. If you give me your name, I'll leave a message. It's me, Jack Robinson, chairman. It really is quite urgent. You think that maybe you could get him on the phone or something? If you just wait here. Seven years. Wait a second. Andy, I'm 44 years old. I've beaten the Robinson curse. You are not 44 years old. Seven years have passed here, but you are only a week older. You're right. I really haven't beaten it. According to this, I'm already dead. It doesn't even look like me. Good evening. Hunter Sprague, Supervisor, Internal Security. I believe I asked to speak to Ziggy. The chairman's not available, Mr. Robinson. Did you say chairman? Sir. Jonathan Robinson disappeared seven years ago and was pronounced legally dead. Yeah, I can see that. Only I'm standing right here. Well, I'm sorry. No, sir, you I listen. Can't, sir. I Even can't. if I'm illegally alive right now, I still own the land that this resort is built on. So you go find Chairman Mannheim and get him in here, or I'll go find him myself. Look, relax. I'll see what I can do. Chairman Ziggy, I'm officially overthrown. There's nothing for us to learn here. That man is not going to get your chairman. Of course he will. Wait a minute! Mr. Robinson? You're right. Open up! Let's go. Hello! Break it in. Jack Roberts. Jack? It's impossible. He's dead. What did this man say? Only that it was very urgent to speak with you, sir. He certainly looked the part. Countess Wilhelmina. The Countess has been dead for over six years. I'm sorry. Good night. Can't be. Wait. Desan? Jack? Desan, it's Jack! Jack? My God! Jack! You're alive! What are you doing here? Bring your lady friend. I knew you weren't dead. The curse, it was too early. Come in. Come in. You live here? Yes, yes. I want to know everything. 
I mean, what happened to you? Where on earth have you been for the past seven years? It's a long story. Willie? Yes, of course. What about Dusan? What's he doing here? I have kept Dusan in my employment for many years. I asked him to watch over you, to keep me informed of your progress. <laughs> You're kidding. You've been to the world. Up there, you've seen it. I'm so envious. You should be. It's terrible. What our family's gone through is nothing compared to the suffering we've caused. I've seen it. Jack, we have very little time. Undine. Countess Wilhelmina, this is Undine. See you found another home for the necklace I gave you. It belongs to her. I gave it to Jack. Oh, you knew him. You come from up there. He destroyed my world. She, she means the first Jack from 400 years ago. I know who she means. I raised him. You raised him? The poor misguided boy who climbed a beanstalk in 1611 was my son. How can that be? Girls as many ugly tentacles. My girls. was to see my son die before his time, and his son and his son, one after another, they died. I'm alive. My crime, perhaps the greatest of them all. A mother's love. That terrible, overwhelming desire to be proud of Sons. Look at us, Jack. We'll never want for anything ever again. Oh. Be done with him. Finish him off. Not this way, Mother. No. son to commit those crimes, thinking only of myself, of my wealth and my position. Now you're going to die, your child. I can't bear for you to die. Then help us. We need to find the goose and the harp. If we can return them, then the curse will be lifted. This is true. Yes. Then you must find them. And we have very little time. Dushan! Bring up the Rolls Royce! Immediately. I have a plan. I have not seen the harp or the goose in decades. But there's an old mine beneath the castle. Whenever wars broke out, the mine was used to protect the family treasures. A perfect place to hide anything, especially a goose lays golden eggs. There's a secret entrance to the mine. Only the family knew about. This must be it. Go, my boy. Find the treasures and end our curse. 
for Ava. Friend of Gallagher's, is she well? What? No one's in my room. Mandine, this is Vetus. He's the man responsible for those orange flowers I gave you. Thank you. Where is Gallagher? What have you done with her? The goose. The goose. Oh, OK. Yes, that's her name. Gallagher. Well, it sort of suits the old girl, doesn't it? These others, they look like her, but they are not. They're clones. They're, they're, they're ordinary geese, really. <gasps> Gallagher! I don't know who you are, my dear, but that's the most life I've ever seen her. What is this place? <sighs> I know, I know, it's sick, Jack. Stiggy wants us to replicate about a hundred of us, squeezing out gold around the clock. Where is the harp? The harp? She cannot lay without her. Oh, the music. Oh, yes, of course, Siggy had someone playing it, but now... Well, you know, Siggy. How do we get in there? There must be a code or something. Well, no one's ever given it to me. I swear to you, Jack, I feed her. I take blood and tissue samples with remote arms. I tell you, no one can get to that little treasure. Got her. She got her. Uh-huh. Where did you say you met her? This doesn't look good. Get Mr. Mannheim. Now! Andy, stop! Jack, the voice. She cannot speak in your world. Where are you going? To find the harp. You don't know where it is. Help me. Venus, the old instrument collection, is it still in the castle? Uh, well, uh, that's, there is a beautiful collection, actually. Flutes, harps, very impressive. Fetus! Fetus, where? Uh. I want you to treat this with the highest priority, but discreetly, you understand? Call me when you have made contact with Fetus. No, 
business tonight, Ziggy, you promised. Ah, 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 ah. What have I told you, my little Moravian sugar cookie? Don't, Don't touch anything. anything. I'll be back soon. Sure, yeah. Oh my God. No wonder the old girl can't talk. 15 eggs every day, like clockwork. It's amazing. All these years. When was I going to find out about this? Based on software. Hello, it's Fetus Millennia. Uh, we're showing a security breach here, over. Oh, it's uh, just a slight malfunction. Everything's fine. Need the security code, please, over. Security code won't be necessary. Everything's under control, over. Security code, over. I really have to go now. Have about 30 seconds to get the hell out of here. Zone 23. Earlier, I went all the way up to the castle. We stole the idea from the Romans. They stole the idea from the Greeks. Yes, yes, all right, I'm coming. Over. Go on, I'll stall them as long as possible. Great Hall, West Balcony, you'll find it there. Jack, it's cloning. It's okay. It's just that when you and Siggy shut down my project, I was desperate. I didn't know how I was going to feed the family. Vetus, it's me who should be apologizing to you. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Come on, hurry. And good luck. Well, it's about time. She tried to escape, but she's, she's fine now. Better than ever. I own this place. You work for me. Check my right front pocket. You'll find my identification. That won't be necessary. Check. His family. My God, Check. Is it really you? Hello, Ziggy. We thought you were dead. Give me a hug. Check. Mr. Sprague, take these men back to their posts. Yes, sir. Come, come. Boop, 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 boop. Let's go. We feel very secure now. Thank you so much for your prompt uh, response. You look like crap, and yet you're the best sight I've seen in seven years. Antin, this is Ziggy. Antin, lovely. I believe we met the night the check disappeared. When were you going to tell me, Ziggy? Tell you what? You're making me feel like a bad guy, Jack. <laughs> Look, your father asked me to tell you when you were ready. I guess I just thought you weren't ready. Really? Look, Jack, come on. You never would have believed me anyway. Hi, Jack, I thought you should know. Your family fortune is built on a goose who your ancestor killed a giant for? 
that lays over $250,000 worth of gold a day. <laughs> oh, and by the way, your aunt is 420 years old. <laughs> wait, wait, I got one better. Listen to this. <laughs> I was just up in Giant Land on trial. <laughs> and they told me that if I don't bring back that harp and this goose, they're gonna cut my head off. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't bring back the goose and the harp, you... Oh. But you know, Jack, I can't let you do that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I figured somebody had to cut the beanstalk down and nobody stood to gain as much as you, Mr. Chairman. You know, I thought the difficult part would be getting your will rewritten, leaving your entire estate to me. But in the end, no one even questioned it. After all, you had no family, and everyone knew you loved me like a father. I did love you like a father, Ziggy. I know, it's gauche, but after all, we are in a casino. <laughs> You've been planning this for a long time, haven't you, Ziggy? All that meaningful advice about staying out of relationships and avoiding marriage. You just didn't want me to have an heir. Tough decisions make the man, eh, Ziggy? They are coming, Jack. Shoot me, Ziggy. I must. I will. You lose the goose either way. What do you mean? The Robinson curse. It has exactly the same agenda as you. Only what you don't know is that when I die, the only thing you're gonna get out of that goose is scrambled eggs. Even if you're telling the truth, Jack, I got 20 billion in eggs downstairs. Not as much as I'd like, but still workable. You're insane. No, Jack, I'm just greedy. Very greedy. You see, Jack, greed makes great businessmen, great leaders, great civilization, great me. I am the greatest giant of the world. Electric prods and oh, oh, sure, sure. You try keeping your beak shut for 400 years. Huh, you get pretty tired of just thinking after about the first century. 
Mind you, I did come up with some interesting theories on the nature of the universe. Shh. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sacred moment and all that. <laughs> Jack Robinson, from our world, thank you. Harmonia, will you play in the new day? Go on, sweetie. That is why I am. This is here. Our world has a future again. You could be happy here. I can't. As much as I want to, I can't. I hope you understand why. Magok would allow you to stay. If you go, you can never return. He has vowed be no more travel between our worlds. I can't stay. There's an awful lot of history that I have to make right. I'm losing another Jack. This time it's the right one. Some years ago, we developed a hybrid biogenetically engineered desert pea that will grow to full maturity with less than two inches of rainfall a year. And by applying the same technology to soy, grain, potatoes, fruit, we believe we can beat hunger and famine around the world. Excuse me. Are you going to pay for all of this? Like I said, all the resources of the company will be dedicated to this effort. But Robinson International is a $200 billion enterprise. Exactly. Let's make the impossible possible. That's what Jack 
has asked me to tell you. Thank you. is lifted. You're the first of the Robinson family to hear and see the truth and now I know you will not be the last. Willie, you've helped me to see things I never imagined. You've changed my life. Thank you. But I don't know where I fit in anymore. Follow your heart. It will lead you. Live, my beautiful boy, my son. Juliet. I only did what you asked me to do. You picked the wrong boy. I'm a librarian, not a bean boy. I know it is late, but I must see him. It is important. That's the way the story goes. What if the giant was good? What would that make Jack? I don't know. You're supposed to know. Well, then they wouldn't be able to live happily ever after. <laughs> Come here. Who says they cannot live happily ever after? I'm afraid to turn around in case you're not really there. <laughs> There was something I wanted to tell you before you left. I love you. Yes. Yes? That's what I wanted to tell you. Three months! 
thought I was going to go nuts without you. Three months for you, six hours for me. I think Magog only gave me these vials, so I'd leave them alone. Look, he's given me two extra for our return. If you would come with me. If I come with you? Wait. <laughs> okay. Quick, grab my bag. Woo! How long do we have? About a week. Seven years. <laughs> Not bad. Say, how many people can you carry with one of those explodey things? One. Well, I was just thinking, seven years. Could be a whole bunch of little Robinsons by then. <laughs> And so, they do live happily ever after, in this time and that time, if you believe in the possibility of the impossible.